you haven't seen me in a while. I'm Heather and I haven't been recently seen reading. I took um, what might be euphemistically referred to as a hiatus from filming. Lots of different reasons and in the process I've forgotten how to do everything. Everything from how to set the camera up, how to figure out lighting, how to map out content. But never mind. Give it a go anyway. So I haven't been around since June, I think. And June is when I went back to regular full-time work. I had been on sabbatical and I was plunged almost instantly into a massive amount of pretty intense work to get the university ready to teach online in the fall, only online. Um, we have a handful of classes that are in person, but it's a tiny proportion. And that means as a collections librarian, um, a lot of pretty intense work to source primarily video, lots and lots of video, streaming video to support the curriculum. And while it's pretty straightforward to buy packages or bundles of videos if you can fit into your budget. Locating individual um, movies that faculty members may have shown as part of a, a sociology course or a social work course or a literature course has proven to be much more challenging. Um, a fairly large team working on it um, in a pretty compressed time frame and large volume. Individual videos are hard to come by because there's um, there's not the kind of long-standing apparatus in place to sell these things to university librarians. Books are easy to buy for a university. There are many, many systems for identifying the book, identifying who can sell it to you, paying for the book and getting the book, whether it's an electronic book or a print book. Videos, not so much. Um, stuff for that you might be able to watch on Netflix. We can't provide for classes. It's a complicated and often frustrating situation. So since my summer was eaten entirely by streaming video, I didn't have much appetite for making my own streaming video. Um, but we're kind of at a pause in the video ordering before we start to ramp up for the, the winter term. So I thought I'd give another crack at recording some videos. Part of what was going on for me in the summer, besides the new work schedule and new work pace, as I left sabbatical and returned to regular work, is figuring out how to schedule all the stuff that goes into um, filming and recording. And then that landed on top of a bit of what I suppose you could describe as a reading slump. I was reading lots, lots of things, roughly the same amount as I usually read. But none of it was sitting very well with me, and I think that had more to do with my mood um, and general sense of distraction and being weary than the quality of the books I was reading. So it was a bit of a, a frustrating four or five months, um, but that's okay. We all have um, times in our work lives when things are frustrating and the, the work that we were doing to support the fall terms was very worthwhile doing. Doing online teaching, whether you're the student or the instructor, is a very difficult thing, so I was happy to be able to lend some assistance in that. So I'm just looking at some notes I took here. Um, yeah, so lots of stuff I read just didn't sit well with me, um, mostly because of my, my mood and rather than the quality, I think, of the books. But I did read two or three things that I thought I would highlight and recommend to people if they're curious. A graphic um, historical biography, um, The Three Escapes of Hannah Arendt. It's a biography of Arendt's movement from Europe to North America over the course of the Second World War into the 50s and 60s in North America. And it's great. Um, it's a, got a very deft hand in summing up the, the historical situation, um, the philosophical themes that she was working with in a very light 
hand, and by light hand I mean it's it's very different than say Gina Siciliano's recent um, graphic biography of Artemisia, Artemisia Gentileschi, which uh, had much tighter drawings, much stricter in its reproduction um, of paintings and places, strives much more for verisimilitude and had um, an apparatus of very tightly written footnotes and blocks and blocks and blocks of rather didactic prose. So what I quite admire about the, the Three Escapes of Hannah Arendt is how it conveys so much information about the period and the topic without becoming heavy-handed in um, the exposition. It's quite an interesting thing to have accomplished with a, a graphic novel. So the second thing I'd recommend would be Svetlana Alexievich's Last Witnesses. This is one of her oral histories. It came out in 1985, but recently translated into English. So it's an oral history of the survivors of World War II who were children in the Ukraine when Germany invaded. It's, um, it's heartbreaking, but beautifully done. She's got an amazing way of combining oral histories and structuring the sequence of them so that it tells um, individual stories but builds up a, a sense of um, accumulation of events and the progress of time. Heartily recommend it. Um, lots of trauma in it, lots of hard stories, and glimmers of happiness and um, not so sad stories in it as well. The third book I'd recommend wholeheartedly is Leanne Badas Masak's New Plumbing Cure for White Ladies. This is great. It's a Canadian novel, and it's a, a novel that's in response to Susanna Moody's Roughing It in the Bush. And the characters in Simpson's novel are roughing it in, in an urban landscape. And it's unlike a lot of uh, Indigenous literature in that it's not driven by stories of trauma. So it's very different than the Alexievich for example. It's it's not plot driven driven at all. It's um, small sections, some poetry, and a really wide range of kinds of characters. Some human characters, some um, inanimate characters, some animal characters, some plant characters. And I quite liked it and would heartily recommend it, especially if you're looking for something for Indigathon, if you can get your hands on it. The thing that stayed with me, um, and is going to make me reread it soon, is how funny it is. You have to read it, I think, at the right pace to realize how funny it is. And I think if you've lived in a place where blue tarps from Canadian Tire are ubiquitous, you will enjoy this novel. Heartily recommend it. I'm going to try to do a little bit of reading for non-fiction November, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to line my reading up to the prompts. I'm going to try to read some things that have been on my shelf for a while, which I suppose would fill the prompt for time. I'm going to try to read, let's see, what have I got here? The first one that I want to try and read is Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments. This is Sadia Hartman's most recent book, and it's account of the black women who moved north. The turn of the 20th century. I'm quite curious about this and I've had this copy on my shelf for several months. It's one of the first things I purchased um, once we were out of lockdown here, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that's going to fit the movement prompt for nonfiction November. The second one I'm going to try to get through is Molly Peacock's Paper Gardens. This is the story of Mary Delaney, who in her 70s started doing paper cutting and produced um, accurate, astonishingly accurate botanical images uh, with glare um, using scissors and paper. I'll see if I can find some images and pop them in. But they're beautiful things. And this has been on my shelf for quite some time and it was on one of my nonfiction November reading lists from a couple of years ago so maybe it also fits under time. Um, I would also slot it under the time prompt because Delaney accomplished all of this at a time of her life when most many women are kind of written off. She was in her mid-70s when she started this work. The third thing I'm going to
going to tr maybe get to. Move its slot in under Discovery. And this is Simon Garfield's Mauve. This is a d an account of the discovery of how to dye fabric and other things mauve. A Victorian invention. And I've had this on my shelf for oh, probably more than 10 years. And it's time that I get to it. Another one that I'm going to try to borrow from the library, which would fit under Buzz and would give me something towards Pine, Digiton reading, is Robin Wall Kim Rose Braiding Sweet Cass. So those are the books I'm going to try to read in November. See if I can get back into reading and recording. I took a pass on Victober this year. I I had trouble with, with it, more trouble than I have had in previous years. It's the focus on the British Isles in the period that gives me so much trouble. I, I had a pretty extensive list of things that I could manipulate and maneuver my way around to read for the period, but it just didn't sit very well. Um, and I struggled with it because October is Black History Month in Great Britain. So I took a pass on Victober, but I thought I would jump in again and try some stuff for nonfiction November instead. I hope you've been well and that you're taking great pleasure in your reading and that you and your kin are well and that you are taking care of each other. Bye bye.